now that we've created the training pipeline for SKLearn, we're going to create one for the XGBoost model. We'll also add a detailed description. And while we're here, let's add some tags. These tags help group your pipelines. You could also search your pipelines by tags as well. Next, we'll begin building out our pipeline. We need to add a few utility functions. So let's open up our text editor. Actually, let's add the training set to the pipeline first. We'll add a global data product and we'll choose the training set. This way, both pipelines don't need to recompute the training set every time. Let's add our hyperparameter tuning block. Now we'll open our text editor and add a few utility functions. We'll add the hyperparameter space for the XGBoost model. Well, first we need to import a few modules. Well, let's import the booster class from the XGBoost module. Okay, now we'll put in some values for the hyperparameter space. All right, looks good. So next we'll add a file for the XGBoost model functions that we'll use to train the model. This file will include creating the sparse matrix out of the training set and the validation set. It will also be responsible for running the hyperparameter tuning, also fitting the model when we're done on the entire training set, a wrapper around the train method. And the hyperparameter tuning function that handles the objective. There's a callback we'll use for experiment tracking, the optimization library, and a few other methods to clean the hyperparameter data because it expects integers and sometimes for some reason that f min function returns floats. Now that we can import all these files, we can finish building our hyperparameter tuning block. Let's add some tracking in here. This will track the experiments using MLflow. Let's open up our text editor and add the logic to track the experiments. Here you see there's a callback and the callback passes these four objects. So with those objects, 
we'll be able to pass them to track experiment and we'll use ML flow to track those values along with the metrics and other metadata around our training. Let's go ahead and add that file. We'll call it uh, logging. And it's we'll paste in some code. And all of this code is available on our repository. And all this does is it sets up the experiment. It pulls some default values from the environment variables. Uh, if you want to customize those values, it will create an experiment if it doesn't exist. And you can pass in a bunch of optional parameters to log. Here it's logging the developer, the model, the pipeline. And we commented out that part because it logs too many things and it might take up too much memory. Great. Now that we're done with that, we can train. Oh, well, we have to run the upstream block. And we'll see it should finish quickly. Oh, actually, it recreated it because the training set was outdated since 600 seconds have passed. We'll also add a way to control the max evaluations here so that when we're just testing, we can decrease it just so that it finishes faster. We'll also add early stopping rounds here and make these controllable via the pipeline variables. Here we're just going to add them to the pipeline itself. And then when we want to run the pipeline or trigger it via an API call, via another pipeline, we can pass those in and control those values. Oh, actually, we can remove that from here since it's being passed down at line 35 in the keyword args already. And actually, let's decrease this so that We'd have to wait forever for it to finish. Looks good. Looks good. And this is what it's done. We see the best hyperparameters here. And we are outputting the data set to be passed down to the next block, which will train the model on the entire data set. And let's put this back higher. Yeah.